Another teaser from Weird last week, and this one's kind of a doozy. On last week's Waldo's Weekly, we got a sneak peek at an upcoming character named Gwil. This is a resurrectionist model, and it has the keyword returned. Now, some of you may remember that in the last set of erratas that we got, Barbaros picked up the new keyword returned. When I saw that, I immediately thought, Barbaros returned, that must be Lilith. But for a few different reasons, this new character seems to indicate otherwise. So this time, I think we're going to go through the article line by line and break down what everything means. Because we get a lot of clues here, but it's not super clear exactly what's going on. Though I think we can draw some pretty strong conclusions. If we take a look at the article, the first few sentences give us a little background about the Dryads. The Fae were the original inhabitants of Malifaux, and their kind was divided up into several different groups. One of those groups was the Dryads, and they were most associated with nature, forests, and plants. Titania, who later became Queen of the Fae, was one of these Dryads. Next, the article mentions that when the Grave Spirit arrived, some of the Dryads watched the Autumn Court wither. Now, this is a reference to what happened after Titania came to power. Now, I'm going to go into this in more detail in a future video, which I'll link here when it's done. But to give you the abridged version, 12 mages among the Fae became super powerful. They managed to create life, which later became the Nephilim, and were even able to make themselves basically immortal. Soon, they got bored, and each individually decided that they wanted to take all the power for themselves, so they all go on a rampage. Titania, who's queen of the Fae at the time, and realizes that she can't fight back against them conventionally, decides to build the portal at Kythera, which, unbeknownst to her people, was not a weapon, but was a portal that would allow the Grave Spirit to enter into this world, the Grave Spirit being the embodiment of death. Now, the Grave Spirit doesn't get all the way through, but his power starts to seep into the world, and Titania uses some of that power to kill the tyrants, or so she thinks. Now, as you might guess, it has a pretty horrible effect on Titania and the rest of the world. Kythera gets closed so the Grave Spirit can't come through, but it's not closed entirely, so his power continues seeping into the world, causing all sorts of negative effects and allowing things like necromancy to exist. So going back to the article, it seems like, much like the rest of the Fae, Gwil was pretty pissed off about all this and held a grudge against Titania. And it also seems to indicate that he's been dealing with the effects of the Grave Spirit's power for all this time. Now, I think that right there explains why Gwil is a resurrectionist. Being aligned with that faction, I don't think necessarily means he's siding with the Grave Spirit. I think it just means he's been twisted by the Grave Spirit's power. And maybe that's why he looks the way he does and has some of the abilities that he has. So moving on, we get a little more information about how Gwil's pretty pissed at Titania. He's holding a grudge and he's hiding out in the Knotwoods, planning his revenge against her. Maybe he doesn't know that she gets banished by the other Fae. Then eventually, he gets visited by some strange newcomers. Now, my best guess is that this is referring to the Nephilim. If gwill has been hiding this whole time, even if he was there when the true Nephilim were made, he wouldn't recognize the Nephilim as they are now. This is because, after the tyrants created the Nephilim, and then Titania did her thing, destroying their physical forms, and then was herself banished, the Fae and Nephilim found out that the tyrants weren't actually destroyed, and their incorporeal forms are still around. So they went about trying to imprison all of them, since they couldn't be killed. One of the tyrants, Shezul, would feed on the Nephilim, and that would increase his power. So the Nephilim got desperate, realizing they couldn't beat him the old-fashioned way, and they performed a ritual to transform their red blood into the black ichor that we see that they have today. And in that way, when Shezul would consume them, it would hurt him instead of powering him up. This, combined with the influence of the Grave Spirit through the centuries, twists the Nephilim and transforms them in a variety of ways. When they were first made, they looked roughly human, but now we can see they have hooves and wings and black blood and fangs and all that. So going back to Gwil, if he knew the Nephilim when they looked like people, and now he's been hiding out and missing everything that's going on, if the Nephilim as we know them now approached him, he would definitely find them strange. Now, these visitors ask Gwil to balance the scales of life for one of their greatest champions. Now again, this might sound like they're talking about Lilith, but further down, it says that this champion endures for centuries under Gwil's watch. Now, since Lilith has only been trapped in Nythera for a few years, she can't be this champion. But this does give us some clues as to who the champion might be. Now, one possibility is that this champion refers to Nikima and Lilith's mother, Lorelai. Lorelai had previously united the Nephilim and encouraged them to behave in a more civilized manner, but she was soon challenged by another broodmaster, and in a duel that was reminiscent of Nikima and Lilith's, she was struck down by her foe. It is said that she died, but perhaps her followers brought her to Gwil, and he preserved her life as a result of their common enemy. Now, for this to be the case, we would have to get an explanation for why Lilith and Nikima don't seem to be aware that their mother's still alive. A character who might fit the bill better is the first true Nephilim who was ever created by the tyrants, Castor. Castor is said to be an exceptionally large and powerful Nephilim who allied with Lorelai and provided her counsel. When the Black Blood ritual took place, it didn't seem to work on Castor, and his blood wasn't transformed, but as a result, feeding on his normal prey did not seem to quench his hunger anymore. 
In an ironic twist, he soon found that the only way to stop himself from starving to death was to consume the black blood of his own people. As a result, Castoras isolated himself in the woods. He now lays comatose in a vault of stone and vines, only rising occasionally to feed before returning to his slumber. Perhaps Gwil was the one who put Castor down in this comatose state to preserve his weakened life and allow him to go on without having to devour all of his kin. We also know that Castor supported Lilith's rule after Lorelei's death, which lends some credence to this theory because that would explain why Barbaros might join up if Castor returned. So even if this new keyword might not be for Lilith, this story might send into motion a sequence of events that could lead to her coming back. So what do you all think? It seems clear to me that Weir did the errata on Barbaros, knowing that we would all think Lilith was coming back. So perhaps this is just more misdirection, and this new master, if we're getting one, is going to be a brand new character, or someone we haven't considered yet. But I do think Castor fits the bill, and it would be pretty cool to have a Nephilim vampire out there doing his thing. It'll be interesting to see what faction he'd be part of. Obviously, there can be characters outside of faction within the same keyword, so he could be an Everborn, and Gwil could just be a resurrectionist in his crew. But considering he's basically a vampire, maybe he'll be part of the resurrectionist anyway. I guess we'll have to wait and see. But drop a comment below and let us know what you think about all this, and let me know if there's anything that I've missed that might give us a clue as to what's going on here. And of course, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next one.